Hello everybody, this is uh, General Yanis and today in Death Card Tactics we will be looking at the Terminus S, the 2000 points list that made a very nice showing in the London uh, Grand Tournament, uh, getting the third place. So uh, beware of the of all the zombies and <laughs> box walkers coming. Uh, let's, uh, let's get started. So today, the 14th uh, of October, uh, as I said, uh, the, in this uh, video, we'll be reviewing David uh, Horn's uh, third place uh, Terminus Est death card list um, that uh, went uh, basically undefeated uh, in, the, in this tournament where very high uh, scoring was needed. Uh, the only loss was against the winning list uh, of Admec, Admec very much in the meta at, at the moment. David met him uh, met the Admec in the semi-finals, still scoring 84 points in that in that game, and uh, basically very nice wins and uh, high scores on on the other on the other battles. So, uh, with no further ado, uh, let's uh, take a look at the list. So um, this is the the London GT Terminus Est list, a battalion detachment uh, from the Harbingers Plague Company Army of Renown Terminus Est 2000 points list. Uh, remember, I have I have made a review on the Terminus Est rules. Uh, so basically, it, it doesn't it gives you some benefits, some stratagems, some uh, new psychic powers, some relics, etc. But you can't take uh, vehicles in your list. So. In the HQ choice, we have Typhus, very also thematically fitting, leading the Terminus Est Assault Force. He is the Warlord, he gets then the Shamble Rod and the Harbingers of Death Warlord traits. Uh, he takes the Psychic Powers, Curse of the Leper and Gift of Plagues. So 165 points for, for Typhus. Uh, then we have two Malignant Plaguecasters, uh, they, all, they both uh, take uh, the take psychic powers from the festering discipline from the terminus est long rot and rot wind some uh, nice uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, malefictions uh, powers for this play caster and then the other play caster has the noxious dis discharge the accelerated entropy and he takes the filth sensors relic giving him six inch uh, to uh, to his uh, to to the range of his uh, witch fires uh, his spells so both his spells can do mortal wounds and uh, and uh, and uh, yeah they, they can uh, so he benefits from six inch more range for his uh, mortal wound dealing. And then we have the main uh, the main part of the army. Let's say the, the in the troop choice we have the pox walkers. So basically five units of pox walkers, almost a hundred pox walkers, uh, three shy from a hundred, so ninety seven uh, pox walkers on on the table. So really. Uh, a very strong uh, center here with, uh, let's say, a first line of assault with with Foxwalkers. Then we have, let's say, the the elite infantry. We have three units of uh, five Light Lord Terminators. Uh, one of them gets the Plague Skull of Glothila relic. Always a very helpful relic, giving giving you basically mortal wounds, a couple of mortal wounds uh, for for one command point. So a strong choice for the Light Lord Champion. And then uh, each of the squads have identical composition, all have access. There is one flail, one reaper auto cannon, and then the champion has a combi melta. I think the combi melta is a good choice, uh, especially for Terminus Est, because otherwise we don't have so much uh, anti vehicle shooting. Uh, the, of course, the melta is a bit short range, but it could do something against the strong toughness opponents. Uh, so a good choice, I think, here for the to take also the combi melta. So three identical squads, so 215 points each here, and then we have two units of three death shroud. Uh, both have the extra gauntlet, 155 points. So uh, so uh, 21 terminators in all, very durable and hard hitting in um, in in melee, and also adding some shooting here from the blight lords. Then. We have the let's say the dynamic duo of, of Virion, like in <laughs> in many of the competitive lists, you can basically can't go without your foul blight spawn with the revolting Stenschwarz relics and the viscous death pathogen, 85 points. In this list, he's also the arch contaminator, so he will be helping uh, the blight lords uh, and and potentially also death shroud to reroll uh, uh, all to hit in uh, in melee, basically. And then also the Taliban, 
with the Tollkeeper Relic exploding sixes to the Black Lords, it would be nice to get it on the, on the Combi Melter. Um, let's say again, uh, a very strong combo. Uh, I had a question in one of the other videos: uh, How can you have six, seven elite choices? But basically, the fall, the Virion. If you choose uh, one of, of of each kind, you can have up to three Virion in one slot. So. The Foul Blight Spawn and the Taliban, they only take one spot here. So our two best uh, Virion support characters, the Taliban, especially important in Terminus Est, uh, giving extra command points as this uh, unit, uh, the, this army can use a lot of, of command points to propel the Poxwalkers forward, to get them back to life, uh, etc. Et so the Taliban, a very good addition to, especially to Terminus Est. And then uh, finally, two fast attack units, two cow spawns. Uh, they can hold backfield objectives. They could also go forward and, and do something. But uh, I, th I think the idea is probably to send uh, the, the horde uh, forward and, and just keep something, the cheap units, to, to hold the backfield and screen out uh, potential deep strikes. So very strong uh, infantry list here. Unleash the horde, <laughs> basically. The command, the, the stratagem in the Terminus Est, uh, allowing the Poxwalkers to have a plus three inch move and a plus three inch. All the you play, you, you pay the two command points, and then all your Poxwalkers uh, will be getting the plus three inch move and um, the plus three inch pile in, in the fight phase. So that's, uh, that's a really strong, uh, that's a really strong stratagem. So a Typhus leading uh, 100 Poxwalkers almost, backed up with Playcasters, support team characters, and then 21 uh, Terminators as the main body of the army. Looking at the deployment uh, thoughts and, and secondaries, uh, I would assume that everything would, would start on the table. Uh, probably you could keep one or, or both the Death Trout Terminators uh, to, to Deep Strike. Um, I think uh, I think the Poxwalker should be deployed for board control. The back, the cow spawn, as I said, could sit on backfield objectives. The blight the blight lords with the supportive characters uh, form the second uh, the second wave line. This is at least how I would imagine uh, it should be played. Um, I have uh, some secondaries to consider here. The stranglehold could be interesting as you are putting a lot of pressure on primary objectives. Uh, there are basically hundred models here with objective secure. And that can be quickly moved up the the field with unleash the hordes, and uh, and basically you could you could uh, use it especially versus KG opponents. Uh, to the last could be interesting. Uh, targeting basically it will be the three blight lords. Uh, you could do spread the sickness action. You can take mission secondaries, etc. Um, so so there are some some good options or mission specific secondaries here. For, for this list, but I think Stranglehold and to the last, uh, I think Stranglehold was especially important in the London um, Grand Tournament as they were needed to to really good get good high scores to, to continue uh, even while winning. So uh, I have made uh, I have made this army in Tabletop Simulator and I, I will show you next a video of the deployment and just to get a sense of how much this this army is, is filling on the on the tabletop. With Unleash the Horde, how much of the board can you control from turn one? And uh, some interesting things to do uh, if, if some of your Poxwalker units have, have taken uh, casualties. So let's look at the, the, the deployment example in Tabletop Simulator. All right, so let's look how this, uh, this army looks on the, um, on the tabletop. Here in Tabletop Simulator, uh, we have the, the Terminus Est London list. The, <laughs> it, you can see the, the size of, uh, of all the models. Uh, you can easily fill uh, the whole deployment zone. So let's see what we can do, uh, let's say, in, in this type of, of, of map. We can, uh, let's wait with the characters here. And just try to deploy uh, the the box walkers. Let's move the terminators out of the way. So let's see here. So basically, you can do a phalanx type uh, deployment, uh, like ancient Greece. Something you could uh, maybe leave one of the small units here to cover this objective. But let's see, for argument's sake, that we we do something like this. Uh, we can have some of the spawn to 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 have the backfield and maybe screen out uh, the the opponent here. 
then we could have uh, our blight lords as a, as a second ah, as a second wave okay then we could have the the blight lords as a as a second wave uh, i think that the blight lords are, are better on on the table uh, rather than deep striking let's let's do something like this and then uh, then we can have a typhus let's say let's put a typhus here close to the to the mid to the center we could have a plague plague caster on each side and then we have the maybe let's move these terminators here and then we have the file blight spawn with his aura and uh, the taliban he can also tag along uh, to give the exploding sixes we could we could leave the the death shroud for example uh, to deep strike so we add some threat to, to the opponent we could plug in uh, maybe one of the unit of of death shroud and that just leave one uh, to to deep strike but this is this is basically yeah some something you could uh, you could be doing here and let's see uh, when we uh, if if we, if we get the first turn let's see what happens if we can advance uh, we unleash the horse stratagem for the pox workers and we see what we can do when we can advance them so let's see how much of the board we can cover let's advance this first uh, pox walker unit so we can walk 10 10 inches with this squad so we can uh, we we can get some uh, some good board presence here let's advance the second one That's only a nine inch. And again a nine inch. Ten inch. I'm not rolling very well today. <laughs> But you get the point. You you are able to to come very fast up with the box. So a five. So now we have a a twelve inch uh, move for this unit. Of course, the small the small unit of seventeen uh, always can move more, uh, and then uh, we can we can back we can follow up uh, with the terminators. Uh, everything basically, maybe moving moving ahead here, coming as the as the second wave. So, so, so you can see already from the start, you, you could have half half the game board uh, basically filled filled with your your terminus est, um, and and take take objectives and and dominate. If if you have the if we have the second turn, one thing to consider. I'll just move the, the horde back here. Um, one uh, one tactic uh, if if for example the the enemy shoots shoots this box walker and doesn't kill them all let's say that he he kills like let's say a big chunk of them 12 and we, we only have a few left then it's a good idea of course to use the stratagem to bring uh, box walkers back in our turn uh, and then we roll uh, seven dice and on uh, on three pluses we get box walkers back Let's do that real fast here. So we here we got six box workers back, and then the of course the 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 good thing here is try to deploy them. Um, we can deploy them uh, ahead uh, of the unit. We have to of course make sure we are in uh, in uh, in unit coherency here. Uh, you get the point. We can basically extend the line uh, with uh, just just making sure that every model has a. It has two inches to two models so we could we could extend the line something like this quite easily and then um, we can um, then when we move this unit we can uh, we can move let's say seven inches without advancing if we play the unleash the horde and uh, we are already much further away and then for example if the enemy moved moved up ahead we can we can have a, an easier charge here uh, if we lose uh, a unit completely, we can use the stratagem to bring uh, the unit back from battlefield edge, the the, the rotting wind, and uh, and basically if the opponent moved up closer, then if we play second, we can we can just we can just make the seven inch and then make even a charge here. So 
we can flood the board with box walkers quite quite early in the beginning and then the, the terminators can come up to the mid board stay there uh, do the damage and uh, and uh, hopefully uh, win the game stranglehold gets interesting here because uh, yeah if we can if we can take a couple of objectives we have a hundred uh, objective secure unit uh, models here uh, then uh, then we can force the the opponent to try to come out and then the terminators and uh, the rest of the of the army can uh, capitalize on on that so so just uh, giving you a flavor of how how much of the board uh, this uh, this type of uh, of list could uh, fill So let's uh, let's continue with uh, the stratagems, the powers, and the, the combos to consider. After we have looked at the deployment of the map, of course, as I said, unleash the horde is central to this list, with all the the poxwalkers moving extra. Then we also have uh, for the durability of the poxwalkers, we have the rotting tide for two or three command point, one use only. You can bring a whole unit of poxwalkers back if it's dead. If it's really depleted, you can take them out and replace them with a full starting strength, 20 poxwalkers coming back to any battlefield edge uh, a nine inch away from enemy models, uh, not, not the opponent's battlefield edge though. But uh, strong, uh, so even if you lose one complete unit, you can bring them back uh, and, and do some, some fun things with them again. Of course, the dead walk again, uh, in the command phase, one command point, bring back, uh, you roll seven dice on, on threes, you get poxwalkers back. Poxwalkers get naturally back if they can kill infantry in, uh, in melee. When your poxwalkers are engaged in the fight phase, of course, the very strong combo of Newton strain uh, for one command point and the Harbinger's Wrathful Dead stratagem for one command point. Um, the Newton strain give the poxwalker sixes to hit. Uh, become mortal wounds on top. Once to hit, give mortal wounds to the poxwalker, but who cares with a feel no pain and, and five point per model. Um, and the Wrathful Dead allows you to reroll the whole all to hit, so you can really uh, try to go and fish for a lot of sixes. So a 20 man unit uh, with these two stratagems would be able to give at least 10 mortal wounds, uh, 40 attacks. Uh, hitting yeah, the sixes are molten wounds you re-roll everything uh, with the harbingers so that's really they really really a, a very good combo and a very good use for command points typhus aura giving plus one strength to to pox walkers uh, would help them of course and uh, the blight lord shooting is buffed by the toll keeper the typhus typhus uh, uh, re-rolling once the fall blight spurn aura to fight first if charged blight lords and death shroud if they can uh, fight first. Uh, the Blight Lords have the Flail. The the, the Death Shroud have their their Man Reapers, so they can they can do a lot of damage to any foe uh, if they get to fight first. So Fall, fall Blight Spawn is interesting. Uh, Typhus uh, Gift of Plagues to increase. Uh, uh, yeah, Typhus uh, has offensive powers. With Shamble Rod, he can do mortal wounds. He can use uh, the Smite uh, and the Curse of of uh, Curse of the Leopard to do even more mortal wounds, Gift of Plagues to increase the Contagion range, and then we have the two Malignant Plague Casters with uh, powers from the from the uh, Festering Discipline of the Terminus Est, Lung Rot, uh, a good, uh, let's say, uh, mal malediction debuffing uh, for, for the enemy opponent. It slows down an enemy unit, they cannot advance, and they can only charge uh, enemies within uh, six inches so they can uh, if you're playing against something that can advance and charge and re-rolls etc white scars for example or some other such units long road could be inter interesting to shut uh, yeah slow down some some potentially dangerous uh, enemy uh, melee unit Rotwind takes down two ap from the enemy uh, enemy attacks so this adds protection to the for example to our terminators if they get shot by plasma weapons then they could be still saving, let's say, on three pluses instead of four pluses or, or something like this. So, um, yeah, or bolter fire uh, with, with, with uh, in the tactical doctrine with minus two AP is reduced to AP zero. The Terminators will be saving on two plus. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, much less, uh, much good reduction of the wounds. The second play caster is a bit more on mortal wounds 
with an oxious discharge, uh, it it gives a mortal wound to the to the target, and then the units around it also get mortal wounds. So if it's an enemy castle, you can use this uh, this noxious discharge, accelerated entropy. Uh, you you give you can give easily mortal wounds with, versus opponents with less toughness. They could be if you have fighting something like sisters or something, toughness three brought down to toughness two. Um, the accelerated entropy can do D3 plus three mortal wounds, taking out uh, quite quite several models. And of course, smite is always the the option. I would have thought here that somebody could take putrescent vitality uh, to buff one of the poxwalkers. But then again, if you have so many poxwalkers, if you buff one of the units, maybe the opponent will just focus on the others. So I think also the, this combination of powers uh, is really interesting. Uh, as I said also in the beginning, since these, all these stratagems are very good, uh, you are using burning uh, command points fast, so the Taliban uh, really is important to give you a bit extra command points. So, reaching to the summary of final thoughts, uh, the, this London list is very strong. Uh, Terminus S list, uh, putting many models on the, on the table to put pressure on the, on the board, uh, taking a lot of primaries, objective secure poxwalkers that are surprisingly re resilient and they are also uh, surprisingly, um, they can do a lot of, of mortal wounds, especially in the Harbingers Terminus S setting. So you have basically a, a line of 100 zombies followed by the Terminators, which is our, probably our best competitive units. Uh, with with character supporting, uh, of course the opponent would have a target to take no prisoners in this list. Uh, he could, if he can kill the poxwalkers already there, that's ten victory points, and then a couple of terminators here and there. Of course the opponent would be trying to to take this this horde down. Uh, as terminus est burns the command points fast, the taliban uh, becomes very important. And uh, all in all, uh, congratulations to David David Horn for a strong result. So this concludes the video. What do you think about this uh, Terminus S list? Uh, have you tried something uh, from my own collection? I only have 60 Poxwalkers. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do all this uh, for now, but uh, I'm, I'm more tempted to try Terminus S um, uh, now. Um, in, in maybe, I'll, maybe I'll try that in a, in a, in a practice game a bit later after my first tournament. Let me know in your comments, your thoughts. If you like this video, please press like and subscribe to my channel where I, I have a strong focus on uh, Death Card Tactics and uh, doing Math Hammer analysis for uh, primarily the, the Chaos Functions, uh, factions, uh, Death, Death Guard, uh, also looking into the Thousand Suns. If you want to further support my, my channel, please visit my Patreon page uh, and uh, I really appreciate uh, all, all my patrons for the support and thanks all for subscribing to the channel and watching the videos coming with your good uh, comments. So with these words, uh, General Yanis is signing out. Stay safe out there and bye-bye.